stay there. We are going to wrap up our solutions unit with topic five. And this is about what's called dilutions. And so if you think about what dilution is, that means taking something and making it more dilute. So for instance, if you had like some really strong coffee and you added water to it, that would be diluting it. So changing concentration. Frequently, frequently it's necessary to change the concentration of a solution, either to make it more concentrated or more dilute. A couple of possibilities. For instance, I might have a jug of 18 molar hydrochloric acid. That's very concentrated. I would never give that to a student to use in a lab. Very dangerous very quickly. But I need 250 milliliters of one molar acid. So I don't need to buy one molar acid if I have 18 molar acid because I can just take that really concentrated stuff, add water, and dilute it to a more dilute concentration. Um, another example kind of the opposite. I might have a very dilute solution, and if you evaporate some water out of it, the solution will become more concentrated. So if I have a solution of salt water, and let's just kind of say that it has four salt particles in that much water, that's a very extremely low example, but just to give you a visual, if I evaporate some water out of it, okay, the water level is gonna go down, but those four salt particles are still in it. And so this would represent a dilute solution and this would represent a more concentrated solution. So if you change the amount of water but you don't change the amount of solute, you're going to change the concentration of the solution. And that's what our um, topic is for today and there's a pretty simple equation that we'll use for that. A couple of real life examples of this. Um, if you uh, work at Starbucks or if you get a job there someday, you might need to make an Americano. That's what I actually order when I go there. Uh, what they do is they pull a shot of espresso, they add water to it, and that makes an Americano. So espresso is incredibly strong and concentrated. Americano is a little bit more dilute. Another example, if you've ever seen one of these frozen juice cans that you buy in the frozen food section of a grocery store, um, you can add water to it to make juice. If you just eat the concentrate straight out of that frozen can, it's gonna be real strong because it is a 100% fruit pulp, basically. Um, and then this last scenario that I put down here are IV solution bags. Doctors can put medications into an IV bag and that would go straight into your bloodstream, but they have to create it in the exact right concentration. So they can figure out that if they measure out like a little bit of medicine and then put it into the IV bag, exactly what concentration that will be with this formula, and then they can make sure it's the right dosage. A little bit of vocabulary here. Um, if you're talking about a very concentrated solution to start, that's called the stock solution, okay? So the stock solution is before you diluted it, then you add water and you have the diluted solution. This is very common in chemistry because again, we are frequently given acids, for instance, that have a very high molarity, such as 18 molar. It's um, basically less volume, and so it costs less money to ship it around the country. But we have that 18 molar in the storeroom, but we don't wanna give that to our students, so we're gonna use one molar. So we have to do that dilution process. It's very common. All right. The formula is right here. This is a very simple, straightforward formula to use. It's M1V1 equals M2V2. The ones means the original solution. Oftentimes that's going to be the stock solution. The twos means the solution after the change, so after water was added or evaporated. So I just like to think of it as the ones side is before and the twos side is after the change. This is not necessarily the order that these numbers are gonna be given to you in the word problem, so you have to make sure that you read it carefully. I like to say that um, these problems here are like 75% chemistry and 25% reading, so you have to read it carefully. All right, so again, M is for molarity, V is for volume, the ones are before the change, the twos are after the change. Last note here before we practice, you don't have to use a specific unit for volume as long as the units match on both sides. So if this volume is in milliliters, that's okay as long as this volume is also in milliliters. Or they could both be in liters. 
as long as they match, you're good to go. All right, so let's do some practice. Number one, what volume of 15.8 molar HNO3 is required to make 250 milliliters of a six molar solution? So I'm gonna kind of highlight that we have um, a question here, what volume of 15.8 molar? Those two things go together. That's before the change happened. We wanna know how much of that stuff do we need required to make 250 milliliters of a six molar solution. That's after the change occurred. So the 250 and the six molar go together and then the 15.8 and the question mark volume go together. All right, we are gonna solve these the same way that we did our gas law problems. We're gonna start with a list, M1, V1, M2, V2. Do not skip this step if you want to get the answer right. All right, so the starting molarity before the change happened, it was 15.8 molar. And the question was, what volume of that? So that is our question mark. So again, those two go together. They were before the change happened. Next, how much of that is required to make? So this is describing what I want to make. 250 milliliters of six molar solution. So the 250 milliliters is gonna be my volume and 6.0 molar is my ending molarity. All right, so once you have that, you are ready to substitute into the equation. So copy down the equation, M1V1 equals M2V2. All right, now we're going to substitute our numbers in. So the starting molarity, and I just like to put all my numbers and units in parentheses to keep them clearly separated. So 15.8 molar, multiplied by V1, we don't know what it is, equals M2 is 6.0 molar, and V2 is 250 milliliters. All right, final step is going to be use algebra to solve. These are almost uh, exclusively gonna work out the exact same way. Um, to solve for our unknown, which is V1 here, we need to divide it by the 15.8. So we're gonna divide both sides by 15.8 to get V1 by itself. Divide by 15.8, divide by 15.8. And so that cancels. And what remains, I'll highlight it, V1 equals six times 250 divided by 15.8. So grab your calculator, let's see what we get. All right, I got 94.9. Um, looks like we only want two sig figs, so I'm gonna say 95. And 95 what? Okay, follow my logic here. If I solved for volume, V1, it's gonna be in the same unit as V2. So V2 is milliliters, so my V1 that I just solved for is also milliliters. So 95 milliliters is my answer. Think back through what this problem said now. The what volume was 95 milliliters. So 95 milliliters of 15.8 molar HNO3 is required to make 250 milliliters of six molar solution. I am going to move those things out of the way for just a moment and kind of tell you exactly what this would look like, okay? If we measured out 95 milliliters, maybe in a graduated cylinder, and remember that 95 milliliters was 15.8 molar. That's incredibly powerful, concentrated acid. If we were to pour that into a flask, so pour that in. So there's our acid. I'm gonna highlight our acid blue. So there was our acid. There it is now in a flask. It's still the same, but if I then add water, water is gonna be this orange color, why not? If I add water and fill it up to 250 milliliters, now it is going to be more dilute. So it's all gonna to mix together, you know? all mixed together. And so over here, what we're going to have is 250 milliliters of a more diluted acid solution. Now it's only 6.0 molar. 
So it's less concentrated because we added water. All right, let's move on and try another one. This one says a solution of salt water has a concentration of 10 molar and a volume of one liter. Okay, I'm gonna highlight those because they go together. 10 molar and a volume of one liter. Okay. If it sits out and some water evaporates until the volume is 0.75 liters, what is the new concentration? So the new volume is 0.75 liters and we are trying to find the new concentration. So let's make our list, M1 equals V1 equals M2 equals V2 equals. Think for a moment, what is our unknown? Give it a question mark. It's gonna be the new concentration, which is M2. All right, so let's fill in our starting values. The starting value for molarity was 10 molar, and the volume of that was one liter. And it says it sits out in the sun and we have 0 0.75 liters. Okay, so we are ready to substitute those numbers into our equation. So we have M1V1 equals M2V2. Plugging in, we have molarity is 10, volume is 1 equals M2 is my unknown and V2 is 0 0.75. Okay, just like before, like I said, these are all very similar. To get M2 by itself, we wanna divide by 0 0.75 on both sides. So divide by 0 0.75, divide by 0 point, oops, 75. Those cancel. So highlighting what remains, M2 equals 10, times one divided by 0.75. So grab your calculator. We get 13.33, two sig figs, so let's round it to 13. So 13, and it's a molarity, so 13 molar. Think through your answer. Logically, this makes sense. We started with a high concentration. We started with a concentration of 10 molar, but it left, it was left sitting out in the sun, you know, and some of the water evaporated. So what happened to the concentration? It got higher. Okay. So if water evaporates out of a solution, the concentration increases. All right. If you're feeling pretty confident, feel free to try these on your own. Pause me or put me on mute and then just check back in with my answer at the end of the problem. If you want to keep watching, follow along, and we'll work each problem from scratch. This one says, how much 0.5 molar HCl solution can be made by diluting 250 milliliters of 10 molar HCl? Okay, I'm going to first notice that these two numbers go together. We have 250 milliliters of 10 molar HCl, and the beginning of the problem, highlight in a different color, said how much 0.5 molar. So how much is going to be the question mark volume and our molarity that goes with the question mark is 0 0.5 molar. All right, so here we go. Let's make our list. M1, V1, M2, V2. All right, so our starting values are the ones highlighted in blue, 10 molar and 250 milliliters. Our ending values has a 0 0.05 molar and the volume, we don't know because it says how much. I'm gonna put question mark milliliters, just as a reminder that the volume units match. And so if I start in milliliters, I end in milliliters. Okay, time to substitute and solve. M1 V1 equals M2 V2. All right, M1 is 10 molar. V1 is 250 milliliters equals M2 is 0 0.05 molar, and V2 is question mark, so I'm gonna leave it as V2. All right, so we're going to do our algebra to solve. As always, we're gonna divide by the number that's multiplied by the unknown. So divide both sides by 0 0.05. Goes away, goes away. I'll highlight what's left over in orange. V2 equals all this stuff over here. 
Okay, so grab your calculator, 10 times 250 divided by 0.05. That's going to be a big number, y'all. Whew, 50,000. So our V2, 50,000 milliliters. That's 50 liters. That's quite a lot. All right. Moving on. Let's do a couple more. I think we have six to work through. Next up, number four. How much water would I need to add to 500 milliliters of a 2.4 molar KCL solution to make a one molar solution? Now, I, I bolded this word add, and I even gave us a hint. It says first find the final volume, then determine how much water you need to add. Okay, so we're going to have to just think real hard at the end of this problem. That's fine. We like to think real hard. All right, so let's make our list. M1, V1, M2, V2. Let's think through what we know. I'd like to highlight, I have 500 milliliters of a 2.4 molar solution. So I'm going to fill that in as my M1, V1. 2.4 molar, 500 milliliters. Okay. And then let's highlight in blue. I want to make a one molar solution. So that's my M2, one molar. And so I need to know what my final volume is going to be so I can know how much water I need to add. So before we even get there, I want to point out to you that our starting volume is 500 milliliters. When we solve for our final volume, there's going to be a difference. You know, the 500 milliliters might go up to 700 milliliters. The difference in these volumes is what we're trying to find because it says how much water needs to be added, not how much volume is there in the end, but how much water is added to get there. All right, let's substitute and solve. M1V1 equals M2V2. Filling in, M1 is 2.4. V1 is that starting 500 milliliters equals M2 is 1 and V2 is V2. All right, well, this one's pretty easy. V2 is multiplied by 1, so, I mean, it could just go away. <laughs> uh, but, or you could divide both sides by 1. So what is V2? V2 is 2.4 times 500. Okay, so let's get an answer. 2.4 times 500. 1200. So V2 is 1200 milliliters. That is not your answer. This is where I said these problems are part reading. So the question said, I will highlight it in red, how much water would I need to add to 500 milliliters to make this happen? Okay, so if the final volume is 1200, and we started at 500, how much water do we need to add? Well, that's gonna be 1200 minus 500, and so 700 milliliters added is gonna be our answer. All right, y'all, that's probably the trickiest one that we're going to encounter, so watch out for the ones that ask how much water to be added. All right, two more. You have a stock solution of 10 molar ATP. I know you might not remember what ATP is, and that's okay. Doesn't matter what the chemical is here. You need to prepare one milliliter of a two molar ATP solution. How much of the stock solution? Remember, that's your starting solution, M1. Um, do you need to make the dilution? And actually, it's not M1. It's just the ones is your stock solution. So let's make our list. M1, V1, M2, V2. You have a stock solution of 10 molar ATP. So 10 molar is our stock solution. The question is how much of it do we need? So question mark milliliters. I'm gonna highlight in orange here, our two scenario, what do we need? You need one milliliter of two molar. That's our ending conditions. Two molar and one milliliter. All right, we've got very nice neat numbers here, so this one's gonna solve up quickly. M1 V1 equals M2 V2. M1 is two molar. No, Miss Hammer, no. <laughs> I like to leave these mistakes in here because it just happens, everybody makes mistakes. M1 was 10 molar. V1, we don't know, equals M2 is two molar. And V2 is one milliliter. Okay. 
So how do we get V1 by itself here where I'm putting the arrow? We divide both sides by 10. So what remains is V1 equals 2 molar over 10. 2 over 10. That's going to be 0 0.2. And that's 0 0.2, it's a volume. And in this problem, the volumes were in milliliters. All right, y'all, last problem. Feel free, to, again, to pause this, maybe quiz yourself, try to get as far as you can on your own, and then check back with me to see if you're getting the right answer. Okay, let's read. You have 30 milliliters of a solution with unknown concentration. So I'm going to highlight, that's an unknown molarity, 30 milliliters. After diluting the solution to a final volume, that means it's going to be on the twos side, of 125 molar, the concentration is 2 molar. What was the starting concentration of the solution before you diluted it? So the oranges here are the ones, the purple values up here are the twos. All right, M1, V1, M2, V2. Okay, starting molarity. Ooh, we don't know what was the starting concentration, so that means starting molarity is question mark. It said that we had um, 30 milliliters. I think y'all, hang on y'all. I think I did my ones and twos backwards, but that's okay. As long as we get those orange numbers together. Um, the question mark molarity goes with the 30 milliliters. You have 30 milliliters of solution with an unknown concentration after diluting it. Yeah, so 30 milliliters is unknown concentration. See, even I have to slow down and reread it sometimes. If you find yourself in that situation, that's totally normal. Okay, then after diluting it to a final volume of 125 milliliters, that's our V2, the concentration is 2 molar. That's our ending molarity. Okay. So we're ready to plug in and solve for M1. M1 V1 equals M2 V2. M1 is our unknown. V1 is 30. M2 is 2.0 molar. V2 is 125. Okay. How are we going to get M1 by itself? We are going to divide by the 30 that it's with. Divide both sides by 30 x out right there. I like to highlight what's left over then. Uh, maybe green. Okay, so M1 is going to be 2 times 125 divided by 30. All right, so here we go. M1 equals, let's grab my calculator, 2 times 125 divided by 30 gives me 8.3. So my starting molarity before this solution was diluted was 8.3 molar. All right, y'all, that is the end of this lesson. I hope this was really helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know or let your teacher know, and we are happy to help you. Thanks for watching. Bye.